Within the last 48 hours, there has been an insane amount of buzz, hoopla, excitement, all these crazy claims saying that all of a sudden hydrogen cars will kill EVs because of a new discovery. Now, this new discovery is actually quite amazing. However, will this new discovery enable hydrogen cars to be as cheap as what analysts are saying and undercut the price of an EV? Well, these analysts, I don't think they really fully have any idea what they're talking about because there's a little more to a hydrogen powered electric car, which is what they are, than what people realize. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. You're watching the Electric Viking. If you've been tuning into this and watching my videos recently, you would have seen my video that I talked about the actual cost to replace the fuel cell in a hydrogen powered vehicle or to fix it. I can tell you now, uh, you need to check out that video because the cost is truly staggering. It's more than the cost of the car in most cases. Now, sometimes it's expensive to buy a battery. It depends on what brand of car you've got, it depends what the battery chemistry is, it depends on how much the car manufacturer wants to rip you off. It depends on if you can get it fixed, which you can sometimes but it's never more than the price of the EV, at least not anymore. It was cases where it used to be, but that has changed. However, that's something that people aren't recognizing. Now, with that in mind, there has been a recent discovery that could enable a certain very high cost part of a hydrogen powered vehicle to be minimized by possibly a factor of 100 to 1. It's a truly mind-boggling breakthrough, and this graphene surprise could help generate hydrogen cheaply and sustainably as well. Researchers have discovered that graphene naturally allows proton transport, especially around its nanoscale wrinkles. This finding could revolutionize the hydrogen economy by offering sustainable alternatives to existing catalysts and membranes. Scientists from the University of Warwick and the University of Manchester have finally solved the long-standing puzzle of why graphene is much more permeable to protons than expected by theory. The saga began a decade ago when scientists at the University of Manchester demonstrated that graphene is permeable to protons, nuclei of hydrogen atoms. This finding was unexpected and it contradicted theoretical predictions, which suggested that it would take billions of years for a proton to pass through graphene's dense crystalline structure. Due to this disparity, there was a theory suggesting that protons might be permeating through tiny holes or pinholes in the graphene structure rather than the crystal lattice itself. In a recent publication in the journal Nature, a joint effort between the University of Warwick, spearheaded by Professor Patrick Unwin, and the University of Manchester presented their findings on this matter. Using ultra-high spatial resolution measurements, they conclusively demonstrated that perfect graphene crystals indeed allow proton transport. In a surprising twist, they found that protons are strongly accelerated around nanoscale wrinkles and ripples present in the graphene crystal. How will this affect the hydrogen economy? Before we get to the actual implications on hydrogen cars, obviously the hydrogen economy plays a huge role in the actual financial viability of a hydrogen ecosystem. This groundbreaking revelation carries immense significance for the hydrogen economy, and that is actually true. The current mechanisms for generating and using hydrogen often rely on costly catalysts and membranes some of which have notable environmental impacts. Replacing these with sustainable 2D crystals like graphene could play a pivotal role in advancing green hydrogen production, subsequently reducing carbon emissions and aiding the shift toward a net zero carbon environment. To arrive at their conclusions, the researchers employed scanning electrochemical cell microscopy and this technique allowed them to re-measure tiny proton currents in nanometer-sized regions, allowing the researchers to visualize the spatial distribution of proton currents through graphene membranes. Had the proton movement been restricted to holes in the graphene, the currents would have been isolated to specific spots. But no such concentrated currents were observed, debunking the theory about holes in the graphene structure itself. 
Now, what is actually is graphene, you might be asking? Well, graphene is a single layer of carbon atoms arranged in a 2D honeycomb lattice. It is renowned for its remarkable strength, its conductivity, and its thinness, making it one of the most promising and versatile materials in the fields of science and technology. Dr. Sagan Wahib and Dr. Enrico Davidi, the lead authors of the study, expressed their astonishment at the absence of defects in the graphene crystals, saying, We were absolutely shocked to see no defects in the graphene crystals. Our results provide microscopic proof that graphene is intrinsically permeable to protons. Unexpectedly, the proton currents were found to be accelerated around nanometer-sized wrinkles in the crystals. The scientists found that this arises because the wrinkles effectively stretch the graphene lattice, thus providing a larger space for protons to permeate through the pristine crystal lattice. This observation now reconciles the experiment and the theory. The researchers said, we are effectively stretching an atomic scale mesh and observing a higher current through the stretched interatomic spaces in this mesh. This is truly mind boggling. Now the key takeaway here is that this opens up exciting possibilities for the design of next generation membranes and separators involving protons. And here is the key. The researchers said that exploiting the catalytic activity of ripples and wrinkles in 2D crystals is a fundamentally new way to accelerate ion transport and chemical reactions. This could lead to the, the development of low-cost catalysts for hydrogen-related technologies. Many people don't realize that car companies and businesses all over the world have been working on hydrogen-powered vehicle technology now for more than 35 years. It didn't just start 10 years ago, as which is a, a widely believed concept. People think that it happened recently, and so therefore at some point in time, the development of hydrogen-powered vehicles will overtake that of EVs as we pour more money into them. But the truth is actually not the case at all. However, this new development, researchers are now saying, and apparently companies who work on hydrogen-powered vehicles are now saying, changes the cost problem, the big cost problem here for hydrogen powered vehicles is just how much they cost to make. The hydrogen fuel cell itself, to actually buy a new one for your car when that stops working, which it inevitably will, for some people it stops, has stopped working after around six years of ownership, costs an insane amount of money. Now, this new technology could bring the cost of that down significantly in a similar way to how we have seen the cost of batteries come down year after year after year. However, at this point in time, my friends, all of this media noise is complete nonsense because we are many, many years away from this affecting the technology. It may never have any effect at all. It may in fact have a small effect. It may have a large effect but it's gonna take at least a decade before we see the effects of this new research. So what does that mean? Well, by the time this does have an effect, yeah, sure, it will decrease the cost of hydrogen powered technology, of hydrogen powered trucks and cars, but by then, the cost of an EV will be substantially lower than a gasoline powered car, and the world will have moved on. I believe that, that disruption period window will have closed and there'll be just simply no reason to try and create this massive hydrogen network where you try and pump it around at super expensive prices. Keep in mind, most hydrogen refueling stations around the world can only refuel 52 cars at a time. And then they need to be refueled. Really not a viable proposition if you ask me, but I could be wrong. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.